yesterday was uh, about the plan and uh, how we're looking to, to um, carry it out. Today is, is where the rubber hits the ground because uh, we've got the execution of it and you've got the people that are doing it on the ground um, on your behalf. So we've got uh, the venison uh, marketing people um, coming up to talk to us soon and Dan will um, will start that session off. And then after morning tea, we've got a science update. And again, that's some of the results from the science. That's not about the science we plan to do. That's about the science that we have done and the results that are coming through that will also impact on your um, future profitability. So it's a really interesting morning and hopefully you get something out of it. So I'm going to before, uh, hand over to Dan, but, but what I would like to do is just compliment the 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 exporting companies, the five exporters, for the the way they've gone about um, this whole project, the the getting people to work together uh, for a common goal is always much harder in practice than it is in theory. But the whole process of of getting together and saying, can we do some things together, even though they're all in hard out competition, has, has been a, an interesting exercise that uh, looking in from the outside, I've been really impressed by the, by the way they've all handled it. So I think uh, you know when you see uh, what they have to present, hopefully uh, you'll be as impressed as I am. So thank you very much and I'll hand over to Dan. Thanks Andy. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick sort of 10, 15 uh, intro. Uh, mostly this session is going to be about our uh, four marketers presenting. Uh, so just a quick agenda for this um, session. Um, we'll, we'll give you a quick run through uh, what we've been spending uh, your levy money on, basically. Um, we'll have a bit of a video um, relating to that trial in the Netherlands that I foreshadowed yesterday. Um, and then we'll have those four um, speakers um, from the four companies. Um, and then the way it will work is we'll have a tea break, um, and then after we come back after the tea break, you'll be able to get your rotten fruit out and start hurling it at the, at the panel that will be up the front. <coughs> so, so if you've got some questions throughout, unless we've got a bit of spare time, maybe um, just hold on to those questions till after, after a cup of tea. <coughs> Uh, so just um, quickly, um, Din's, Din's overview. So just one thing I want to be clear about in terms of uh, this, this Savannah stuff and the, uh, the Netherlands trial. Um, this is in addition to what you know, I, I'd describe as the business as usual uh, market promotion work. So Din's will continue with its ongoing strategies around promoting um, venison and velvet in, in, in core markets. Um, we're in the, in the process of just coming to the end of our three-year strategy, which I'll just describe a little further, but this is basically um, where our venison promotion money's been spent. That 1.35 million is the biggest chunk of DINS' budget on anything, um, and it's been spent um, largely in that core market um, of um, the EU, so that's Germany and Benelux countries. Um, also some in the USA, also some in New Zealand, and then that Chefs and Services one is um, the uh, several uh, contract chefs that we use and providing a whole lot of um, promotional material that gets called on once in a while. The, the JVPF is the, uh, the joint promotion fund with, with marketers, so um, where they are making a marketing investment of their choice, we will, we will match them provided it meets our criteria. So, so that first column, the biggest column, uh, it's spend in, in Germany and uh, the Benny Lux is focused around um, a, a program that's called Premium by Nature um, and that has a, has a couple of legs, we'll just quickly touch on them. The, the idea is to influence these young chefs coming through the, the, the culinary system in uh, Germany particularly and also the Benny Lux. So, um, rather than, as I mentioned yesterday, you know, DINS just doesn't have the resource or the reach to um, communicate and to transform the views of consumers. So the strategy chosen two and a half years ago was to try and change the views and the preferences of these young chefs who would be coming through the, the culinary system and um, suggest to them that they might want to eat um, you know, fine um, farm-raised New Zealand venison or prepare it for their customers at least. Um, so, so there was a target age group of about 20 to 40 there and we've been working on those for, for two years already and we've got another year of that program to go. 
Um, the aims of that program, so had some targets that were set out um, when it was initiated, um, so get some, some ambassador chefs on board um, and get them to endorse the product and put it clearly on the menu as being New Zealand products. So we've heard you know, in the past that there's a, there's a problem with people even wanting to identify on their menus that they're serving New Zealand products as opposed to local stuff. Um, we've brought New Zealand, uh, we've brought to New Zealand um, some of those chefs um, and journalists to try and um, increase awareness of um, where the product is coming from, its provenance, clean green, etc. Um, and then use endorsements of those chefs who've, who've come out and hopefully had a good time to um, try and spread the word. So the Young Chefs Exchange, um, this is a competition run amongst, uh, well, that's, that slide's not in there, Ennis. Um, <laughs> this, is a, this is a quick rundown of all the things we've done in that, in that program. Um, but the, 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 the most exciting one is probably, um, well, one of the most exciting ones is this Young Chefs Exchange program. Um, where each year we've brought some, some guys down um, with the ambition, as we say, of them becoming converts to the product and then spreading the word when they get back home um, to Germany. Um, so some quick results. Uh, the idea, obviously, was to have, have more awareness of the product in Germany. So after, after year two of the project, um, we've, you know, we, re we surveyed awareness before we started and then we surveyed awareness after two years and we had a 4% increase in the awareness of our product, um, a 4% increase in the number of chefs who say they use New Zealand product, um, and a, a one third increase in the number of chefs who, who rate the product as premium or good. Um, so that, that's good progress. The program has one, year, one more year to run um, and, and we'll be looking at uh, reviewing that, that marketing strategy, basically. So a quick overview of, I guess, how, how the market's gone over the last couple of years. Um, game prices, if you like, uh, in, in Europe, um, there's, there's always been some sort of differential between uh, New Zealand product um, and the, the local um, feral hunted product out of, out of Spain largely. Um, and that's, that's widened, I guess, and then in the last year we've seen a bit of, bit of a contraction of the differential between the local product and the New Zealand product. Um, maybe you could ask some of the guys who come up later what the reason for that might be, because I don't know what it is. Obviously had some, some dramas around uh, that competition in Europe and the, the euro, the strength of the euro, or lack of strength of the euro. Um, and, and the marketers have obviously responded to you know, weakening prices in, in Europe by um, trying to minimise their exposure to that euro currency, um, and to Germany in particular. So we have seen a, a decrease, um, although we, we constantly say we have an over-reliance on Europe and Germany. Um, we have seen a steady decrease in that reliance over the last few years. Um, so where does the product end up? Um, one of the places is, is into the USA, um, where we've seen, you know, you see on the chart there, pretty steady growth in total volumes and also pretty steady growth. And so, so the USA has become our, our largest chilled market in the last year or two um, because they have a reasonably steady demand for chilled product year round, much less seasonal um, than, in, than in Europe. Um, the other attractive things about um, the USA, obviously, are that um, the currency has been relatively stronger than the euro. Um, that there's an interesting uh, market there around manufacturing products and including pet food items, I think. Um, but also that top end of the market has been growing as well. So, so DINS has been playing a small part in, in that uh, USA growth. Um, we have a guy basically employed full time on the ground there, and he assists with um, sales um, promotion for the for the marketers working there, um, for the distributors. Um, so uh, the focus, un unlike Europe, the focus there is very much about those key accounts and how do you help them grow their sales. Um, so these th those key accounts tend to be um, food service distribution companies, and they will have multiple lines of products, so this is a man with a van um, who goes around restaurants and he may have a hundred different products in the van or a thousand different products in the van and we need to be there to ensure that he's got, uh, he gets some help in focusing on 
uh, New Zealand farm-raised venison as one of those thousand products in the van and actually um, promotes those to the, to the restaurant customers. So that's been our approach in the, in the USA. So um, on to this new and exciting thing, the, the, um, the Savannah trial in the Netherlands. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned yesterday, five companies have, have agreed this approach as a collaborative approach to uh, market, market development, um, trying, to, trying to extend that demand range for chilled product. Um, we launched, as I said yesterday, in, uh, in April. Um, <clears throat> the, main, the main partner in that, uh, well, the first partner in that launch was a company called uh, Harnos, the other co company is called Leuton. Um, so you'll hear uh, Jared firstly talk about Harnos and then uh, we'll hear uh, Sharon, I think, talk about uh, Leuton, who's the other Netherlands uh, distributor. Um, this is a food service type promotion, so um, DINS has uh, assisted in this launch, both in terms of materials and also the services of uh, Chef uh, Brown, um, trying to um, do some demonstrations. There he is, um, showing how um, how we would like the the product to be um, served uh, and prepared. Um, as I said, you know this is about a grilling or barbecue style product, so um, the product has been pitched in a slightly different way, which I'm sure the, the guys will tell you about. It's it's in the meat counter rather than the game counter. Um, you can buy, I think you can buy a T-bone steak, Graham, is that right? Yeah. So um, non-traditional um, venison cuts and, and descriptions. Um, so, so we've got a, a video here. We, we actually um, talked about this um, last year. So we had, had this guy, Ben Veldkamp, who's the um, head game buyer for, for Hanos, and he um, talked to us at our last year's conference about his vision for a uh, a summer grilling product involving deer meat. Um, so we're just going to play a little video that reminds us of that, um, that those comments he made last year and also now where he's got to a year later. So um, we'll listen to that and then I think the first person up after that video will be uh, Jared. last couple of years we had this idea, uh, most of all it was a question, why do we sell New Zealand venison only during game season? That's a good question because it's, uh, it's farmed red deer so it should be sold 12 months a year. We have had a good thought and uh, made a plan how we could uh, introduce this, this meat for, for 12 months onto the menu of the restaurants. It's only a, a matter of, of promotion. And, and showing the, the chefs uh, the possibilities of the meat. 20 years or so I've been travelling to Europe on a regular basis, doing promotions around New Zealand farm venison, extolling the virtues of our farm product as opposed to the wild product. Um, the fact that it's farm raised naturally, antibiotic free and growth promoting free. But what I have noticed in the last few years is a little bit of a change because I think since the global economic meltdown we've seen chefs looking for products that will give them an edge on the menu without costing a huge amount of money. People want to know what they are buying and they want products with a story. And I think the story that we could tell about New Zealand venison is the story of the young generation consuming. The right moment ever would be now because uh, during summertime a lot of restaurants would uh, put ostrich on their menu or uh, antelope meat. In the past we have had eight different um, species of, of antelope and it's all gone. It's not available fresh. From that point of view it is more than welcome to have a new product uh, on the menu for our, uh, our customers during summertime. Juicy meat, free range meat, 100% traceable. It has all the USPs to make a success.